This is Art Sense, a podcast focused on educating and informing listeners about the past, present, and future of art. I'm Craig Gould. This week on the podcast, I thought we could take a look at the shows that are on the horizon for 2022. The list includes historical retrospectives, contemporary gallery shows, biennales, and even a hotly anticipated museum opening. 26 exhibits in all, we'll start with those that have already opened and work our way out. First up is Pepilati Wrist, Big Heartedness, Be My Neighbor, at the Museum of Contemporary Art in LA. Pepilati Wrist is a Swiss artist whose video installations are often described as mystical and surreal. Her work is in many ways a more refined version of the immersive experiences that have become so popular this year. Her installations are usually comprised of large-scale overlapping video with highly saturated colors. The multi-sensory exhibition also includes an interactive element. There are no wheat fields or sunflowers, but Rist's vision may be even more captivating. Pipaletti Rist, Big Heartedness Be My Neighbor, is on view now through June 6th at MOCA. Also in view, is Jasper John's Mind Slash Mirror at the Whitney Museum of Art and the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Jasper John's is by most accounts the greatest living American artist. John's rocketed to fame in the late 50s when he was discovered by Leo Castelli while Castelli was visiting John's longtime love interest Robert Rauschenberg. Known for his sculptural use of paint and his penchant for mixed media, John's is most widely recognized for his artworks, which feature U.S. flags, maps, targets, letters, and numbers. He's received the National Medal of the Arts and the Presidential Medal of Freedom, and now at 91, he is opening a new exhibit so large that it's taking place concurrently in two museums, the Whitney and the Philadelphia Museum of Art. The retrospective covers almost 70 years of work, including new creations. Jasper John's Mind Slash Mirror is on view now at the Whitney and the Philadelphia Museum of Art through February 13th. For a look at the religious side of Andy Warhol, there's Andy Warhol Revelation at the Brooklyn Museum. Andy Warhol shot to fame in the 60s as the leading figure in the pop art movement. When we think of Warhol, we think of paintings and silk screens of celebrities, Campbell soup cans, in American brands. The exhibit examines how Warhol's conservative Catholic upbringing reveals itself in his work in obvious and subtle ways. There are over a hundred pieces on view, including drawings by his mother Julia from a period when she lived with Andy in the 60s. Andy Warhol, Revelation, is on view now through June 22nd at the Brooklyn Museum. As I mentioned in a new segment on last week's episode, the exhibit Black American Portraits at LACMA reflects on the two centuries of Black American art show that was curated by David Driscoll 45 years ago. The exhibit, which features an examination of how Black Americans have been captured in American portraiture as far back as 1800, demonstrates the breadth of Black American imagery today. The exhibit opened in November alongside an exhibit of the Obama presidential portraits. Barack's by Kahinda Wiley, Michelle's by Amy Sherald. Those portraits have moved on, but the rest of the Black American portraits remain. Black American Portraits is on view at LACMA through April 17th. LACMA is not the only place to catch the work of Kahinda Wiley right now. Kahinda Wiley, The Prelude, is currently on display at London's National Gallery. The large-scale exhibit of Kahinda Wiley work takes his traditional subjects out of the portrait studio and drops them into classical landscapes. The prelude is inspired by European romanticism and marks new territory for Wiley. While he is receiving mixed reviews for producing paintings that essentially Photoshop black figures into iconic romantic landscapes, his video work for the exhibit is being lauded. The six videos displayed in the exhibit feature a handful of black Londoners that Wiley transported to the otherworldly landscape of northern Norway. 
The films capture a sincerity and authenticity that can sometimes be lacking by subjects that are emulating other people's poses. Kehinda Wiley, The Prelude, is on display at London's National Gallery through April 18th. Also coming to London is Francis Bacon, Man and Beast, at the Royal Academy. Francis Bacon is one of the biggest names in the late 20th century art world. His unsettling works featured nightmare-like imagery of popes, creatures, and himself. The much-delayed yet highly anticipated exhibit explores how his love of animals inspired his later work. Francis Bacon, Man and Beast, is on view at the Royal Academy January 29th through April 17th. This Saturday, an exhibit kicks off in Paris that takes the iconic work of Yves Saint Laurent to museums all over Paris. Yves Saint Laurent au Musée will take place at Musée d'Art Moderne de Paris, Santa Pompidou, Musée d'Orsay, Musée National Picasso Paris, Musée Yves Saint Laurent Paris, and the Louvre. In honor of the 60 years since Yves Saint Laurent first hit the runway, the museums where the designer sought inspiration are collaborating for an exhibit that pairs YSL designs with works by artists that open the designer's mind. Classic designs will be staged alongside artists like Mondrian, Picasso, Matisse, Bonnard, and Prouss. Yves Saint Laurent au Musée will be on display all over Paris January 29th to May 15th. Monday, we'll see the opening of Charles Ray, Figure Ground, at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Charles Ray is one of the most important 3D artists of the last 40 years. However, his work is hard to pin down. Sometimes it's minimalist and cerebral, while at other times he uses scale to create interest. For example, Ray has created a number of life-size replicas of miniature children's toys. Imagine a fire truck the size of a fire truck that looks like a plastic children's toy. Ray is also known to create contemporary hyper-realistic sculptures out of stone or reflective metal that address contemporary issues through classical techniques. Charles Ray, Figure Ground, is on display at the Metropolitan Museum of Art January 31st to June 5th. Meanwhile, in London, a Van Gogh exhibit of Cell Portraits celebrates the reopening of the Courtauld Gallery. Cell portraits have always been a common means for artists to be introspective or hone their skills in the absence of a model. Van Gogh followed suit and completed roughly 35 portraits in his lifetime. Almost half of those will be included in this exhibit. However, a number of Van Gogh self portraits have been accused of being fakes, including self portrait with a bandaged ear which is part of the permanent collection at the Courtauld. Just go with the assumption that everything you see is just as presented. Van Gogh Self-Portraits is on view at the Courtauld Gallery February 3rd to May 8th. Mid-February sees another 91-year-old artist get the full retrospective treatment. This time it's not Jasper Johns, but Faith Ringgold. Ringgold's reputation and appreciation has only picked up steam in the last decade. Originally a painter, she shifted 50 years ago to making narrative images of American life using quilts instead. Her intent was to distance herself from a medium that was so closely tied to the image making of coloniality. In recent years, she has been hung beside one of the world's most famous Picassos at MoMA, and with the changing landscape of the art world, we can only assume that more and more people will come to love and appreciate her work in future generations. Faith Ringgold, American People, is on view at the New Museum February 17th to June 5th. Surrealism may have sprouted from the French avant-garde over 100 years ago, but it turns out it took flight and made a nest in just about every corner of the world. Surrealism Beyond Borders at the Tate Modern looks at how surrealism spread and the characteristics of the movement that stayed intact as it migrated, such as surrealism's subversion of reality, its humor, and its power in the fight for freedom. The exhibition also evaluates how different regions added to the complex visual language of surrealism. Surrealism Beyond Borders is on view February 24th 
to August 29th at the Tate Modern in London. In the 1400s, there was one sculptor whose work was head and shoulders above the competition. The Florentine sculptor Donatello was revered. This spring will bring a long overdue exhibition of his work, including his most famous bronze, David. The comprehensive show will reside in Florence through the summer, then a scaled down version will travel to Berlin. Donatello, the Renaissance, will be on view at the Palazzo Strazzi in Museo del Bagarlo, March 19th through July 31st in Florence, and then the Gamalda Gallery in Berlin, September 2nd through June 8th of 2023. Mass media influences art. Art influences mass media. Both influence brands. No one embodies this more than Barbara Kruger whose black and white photography with bold white text laid over boxes of red have become iconic. Kruger will be the subject of a major career retrospective this spring at LACMA. Barbara Kruger, thinking of you, I mean me, I mean you, will be on view at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art March 20th through April 17th. With all the buzz around Beeple, it's hard to imagine that Beeple has never had a legitimate gallery show. And just because he has one now doesn't mean he has anything long-term planned with the gallery that's hosting. When you're able to monetize your career the way Beeple has without the need for a gallery, you aren't necessarily in a rush to enter into something formal. Regardless, Jack Hanley Gallery is a creative, forward-thinking gallery that is bringing Beeple to its white walls this spring. Dates have not been specified yet, but it appears you'll be able to find Beeple at Jack Hanley sometime in March. Piet Mondrian would have turned 150 years old this year, so it's time to celebrate and reflect on Mondrian's contribution. A retrospective of Mondrian is especially fun because he is an artist whose work you can see slowly transform from a starting point in Dutch landscape painting to a destination of highly structured geometric abstraction with primary colors. 150 Years of Montreal will be on view at Kunstmuseum Den Haag in The Hague, Netherlands, April 2nd to September 25th, and then at Foundation Bayeuler Rhein, Switzerland, June 5th to October 9th, and then at K20 in Dusseldorf, October 29th to February 10th of 2023. A biennial, by definition, takes place every two years. But COVID threw the Whitney Biennial a curveball, and here we are at three. And the Whitney Biennial is here at last. The exhibit typically gives great care to curating the best talent currently available in American art. With that type of expectation, the selections are often a lightning rod for opinions. But it's undeniable that it's a box that is checked on the upward rise of every great American artist. The Whitney Biennial will take place in New York's Meatpacking District from April 1st to August 1st. Jean-Michel Basquiat continues to remain a top list of most valuable contemporary artists. Much like Van Gogh, people seem to make an emotional connection with Basquiat and his work. But this spring, there will be a show in Chelsea organized by the estate of Jean-Michel Basquiat. What does that mean? Supposedly a more intimate portrait of the artist as seen through the eyes of his sister, Lisanne. Drawing from the collection of the estate, there will be paintings, drawings, multimedia, and personal items that will allow the Basquiat devotee to feel even closer. Jean-Michel Basquiat, King Pleasure, opens April 9th at the Sterrett Lehigh Building in Chelsea. This spring, the National Gallery in London will host a blockbuster exhibition that examines the life and work of Raphael. A real Renaissance man, Raphael excelled at a variety of art forms, including poetry, painting, architecture, and design. The exhibit will be comprised of loans from institutions worldwide, including the Hermitage, the Louvre, National Gallery of Art in Washington, the Prado, the Uffizi, and the Vatican Museum. Raphael will be on view at the National Gallery in London, April 9th to July 31st. Every other year, the art world descends on Venice to see how the world's best artists respond to the challenge of installing a thought-provoking piece in their country's pavilion. 
This year has promised works reflecting topics ranging from climate change to artificial intelligence. It's the Venice Biennale. A good time will be had by all. The Venice Biennale will take over Venice April 23rd to November 27th. MoMA is putting together MoMA is putting together one of the most clever exhibits this spring when they unveil an exhibit around the iconic Matisse painting from their collection titled The Red Studio. The painting is Matisse's depiction of his studio, with its red walls, easels, materials, and assorted artwork scattered around the space. MoMA has identified the artwork in the painting and has brought the collection back together for the exhibit. Only MoMA could pull off something of that scale. Henri Matisse, The Red Studio, will be on view at the Museum of Modern Art May 1st to September 10th. There is one central figure in painting that opened the door for all of the freedom enjoyed by artists during the 20th century, and that was Paul Cezanne. Before Picasso was even born, Cezanne was simplifying forms, flattening objects, questioning how we might be able to see the world. The Art Institute of Chicago and the Tate Modern are teaming up this summer to provide an intimate look at Cezanne's work and the personal dramas that drove his creativity. Cezanne will be on view at the Art Institute of Chicago May 15th to September 5th in the Tate Modern, October 6th to March 12th of 2023. Cornelia Parker loves to do large installations. She loves to blow things up, literally, and put all the pieces back together, suspended in a way that freezes the destruction in that fraction of a second after detonation. But her work is more diverse than that and Tate Britain is giving her the space to remind British patrons why she is one of their favorite contemporary artists. Cornelia Parker will be on view at Tate Britain, May 18th to October 16th. One more big juried contemporary art exhibition will be taking place this summer in Germany. Documenta is one of the world's largest and most influential types of events and takes place only every five years. The curated list of participants this time around are mostly activist collectives whose work makes viewers contemplate the injustices and issues that our world needs to rectify. Documenta 15 will be on view in all parts of Kassel, Germany from June 18th to September 25th. Between Parasite and Squid Game, Korean culture has had visibility in the U.S. like never before. But LACMA appreciates contemporary Asian art like no other institution in the U.S. and has been working and planning for years to bring us the story of how Korean art and culture have transformed over the last 125 years. It was a time of great transition from the last Korean dynasty to Japanese colonial rule to the Korean War to the influence of Western culture. The space between the modern and Korean art will be on view at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art September 11th through February 19th of 2023. On the occasion of what would have been his 100th birthday, the National Gallery in London will be hosting an immense retrospective of Lucian Freud. Freud was active in his studio up till his death at 89, and his long career saw his style transform and evolve. The exhibit will trace the path that Freud took that led him from one aesthetic to the other and what powered his relentless pursuit of perfection. Lucian Freud, New Perspectives, will be on view at the National Gallery in London October 1st to January 22nd of 2023. And last but not least is the long-awaited opening of the Grand Egyptian Museum in Giza. The new home for all things tied to Egyptian antiquities will immediately become the most significant archaeological museum in the world. As if you need any other justification for the claim, the new museum will become the permanent home for treasures of King Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun, Treasures of the Golden Pharaoh, will be on view at the Grand Egyptian Museum upon the museum's grand opening in November of 2022. That's all the time we have for this week. You've been listening to Art Sense. You can find the show on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. If you've enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe. And while you're there, please rate the show and leave a quick review. 
Your feedback is the key to other folks finding us. If you'd like to see images related to the conversation, read a transcript, and find other bonus features, you can go to cambia.art and click on the podcast tab. If you'd like to reach out to me, you can email me at craig at cambia.art. Thanks for listening. Thank you.